Margaret is a contradiction. On the one hand, she's this kindly, soft-spoken grandmother, um, Southern Belle. But to others, she's a cold-blooded killer. Told him, you better watch your back. And all of a sudden, he turns up missing, and you just wonder what happened. She was very sure of herself. She was convinced that she was innocent. I know I'm innocent. She's been locked up for 20 years, and in three weeks, the Black Widow of Las Vegas may walk out of prison on parole. Well, the case of Margaret Rudin was the subject of TV shows and also a book. So what has she been up to since she was convicted of killing her husband? And also, what does she plan to do when she gets out of prison? 13 investigative reporter Joe Bartels has a finale in our exclusive series, The Black Widow, Web of Deception. It read like a Hollywood movie. The case of Margaret Rudin, the infamous black widow of Las Vegas, was actually the basis of a novel. And that's what's brought us here to Los Angeles. The city of angels, bathed in moonlight, seems like a world away from Sin City. But it's home to the man who may know the most about Margaret Rudin's days in Las Vegas and her life story. When I wrote the book almost 20 years ago, nobody could imagine that we'd be sitting here today talking about the parole of Margaret Rudin. It just seemed like something that would never happen. Michael Fleeman wrote the book, If I Die, a phrase borrowed from the ominous warning in Ron Rudin's will when he suspected his life could be ended by someone who stood to gain the most after his death. He didn't mention Margaret by name in the If I Die writer, but most people interpreted that to mean Margaret Rudin. He spent months following in the footsteps of investigators, taking pictures and documenting the case that still terrifies people to this day. We brought retired Las Vegas police detective Phil Ramos to walk us through the actual evidence used to put Margaret away, items that haven't been seen or touched in close to two decades. So this is beyond a doubt the gun yeah. that killed Ron Rudin. 100% certain. The gun, a 22 caliber Ruger with a silencer, is among the crucial pieces used in the trial. It was found at the bottom of Lake Mead by a diver purely by luck. That was the eureka moment for us during the investigation and it put us over the top. You know, up until then we were like, man, do we have enough to, for a conviction? Let, you know, we've got this and we've got that. That right there was, was the uh, defining moment in, in my view as far as the investigation goes. But there's Margaret's wigs and disguises she used, and books on how to conceal yourself and how to get official documents, and a picture of Margaret that also proved crucial to the case. This is a Polaroid of the glamour shot, and this is exactly what it looked like from edge to edge, and it was hanging in a pretty ornate frame right above the bed. The image was stained with drops of blood, Ron's blood, from a phenomenon called high velocity mist as he was shot in the head in his own bed. The high velocity mist was right in this direction here, which fit perfectly with our theory that he was shot while he was asleep because this is the way his head was. The glamour shot would have been like this. There was also love letters and Margaret's perfect penmanship to Yehuda Sharon, the man who police believe she was sleeping with while married to Ron. I've tasted sugar. I have tasted salt for so long now, I've forgotten the taste of sugar. All of it, police say, added up to a calculated cold-blooded killing. There was a mountain of evidence against her and there was very little to refute that. Ron Vest, juror number five and jury foreman, sat through nine and a half weeks of testimony. In the end, it was a unanimous guilty verdict. What was the most disturbing part of this trial for you? I think the fact that he was shot in his sleep. I mean, when you're shot in your sleep, I mean, you don't even have a fighting chance. Ron says the case changed his life. Parts of the trial still bother him. And as Margaret prepares to leave prison, he'll be watching his back. I have a concealed carry permit and so I'll probably be carrying for a while after her release, just to feel a little more protected. Margaret never admitted to anything and proclaims her innocence to this day, another fact that bothers Ron's friends and relatives. Margaret is a contradiction. On the one hand, she's this kindly, soft-spoken grandmother, um, Southern Belle. But to others, she's a cold-blooded killer. Good afternoon, ma'am. Can you please tell your name and industry number for the record? Margaret Rudin, 70503. 
now 76, Margaret Rudin appeared before the Nevada Parole Board in September and says she plans to live with relatives in Nevada if released. How will you be supporting yourself economically? Uh, primarily with Social Security, but I also plan to work part-time and I want to go to UNLV and um, continue my education until I get the BA that I don't need that many credits. Um, by all accounts, she was a model prisoner an activist for other uh, inmates, um, stood up for women inmates and their rights. Rudin sued the Nevada Department of Corrections claiming abuse, misconduct and sexism because women don't have the same access to programs for aging inmates like men do. The DOC settled and in exchange didn't fight her parole. Now she's just days away from a possible return to society. I don't think she should ever get out for any reason. I'm not going to say I wish her well, but I don't wish her any harm. You think that this is actually, that she could get a new trial? Yes. Why, how so? Well, because I think the record is so clear of all the problems the, the case had. I think the question would be, does the Clark County DA's office want to retry this case? Many of the witnesses have since died, but it's just an outrageous miscarriage of justice. And Margaret Rudin's paid the price for 20 years. Margaret is and always was a survivor. She was very good at one thing, and that was bouncing back. She was very sure of herself. She was convinced that she was innocent. In 2008, a district court judge ordered a new trial for Rudin on the grounds of incompetent counsel. But that decision was overturned by the Nevada Supreme Court, and her conviction stands for now. Rudin has appealed her conviction, and it remains in U.S. federal court. A decision could come down by the end of the year. Margaret Rudin could be released from prison on December 15th. Joe Bartels, 13 Investigates.